I don't have friends, I got family. The Fate of the Furious is directed by F. Gary Gray, starring, I assume, many people you are familiar with now in this franchise, and that is, of course, Vin Diesel, Michelle Rodriguez, The Rock, Tyrese Gibson, Ludacris, and a newcomer in Charlize Theron as the main villain. And you also get a couple of returnees from previous films, and that is Kurt Russell and Jason Statham. Before I go any further with this review, I just want to say there will not be any plot spoilers. This film is the 8th film in the Fast and Furious franchise. Yes, the 8th film. If you had told me back in 2001, when the first film in the franchise came out, simply titled The Fast and the Furious, that we would be on film 8 in 2017, I probably wouldn't have believed you. But this is indeed the 8th film, and this film is about the same group or crew of people that you are familiar with, but this time something happens that they were not expecting. Their leader, their friend or family member, as they like to call themselves, Dominic Toretto, portrayed by Vin Diesel, turns his back on the team, and they have to now deal with this. What has become very apparent about these Fast and Furious films is that you can't really go into them expecting to be able to critique them or analyze them in any way. Like I said, this is the eighth film in the franchise. They know what they are by this point and they very much accept what they are through all of its faults and all of its positive aspects. But while I was watching this film, I felt this need to at least do some critiquing with it, some analyzation with it. I don't know, I'm just so built that way while watching films right now that I just can't help it. The main positive aspect I have with this film is that it is rather entertaining from a popcorn entertaining film, kind of a large blockbuster. I think they spent more money on this film than any of the other ones. That kind of shows you how big this franchise now has become, and they are not stopping anytime soon. They are slated to do a ninth and 10th film, and I believe that that's when the franchise will end. But within this film, you have more ridiculousness now than ever before, and it's not so much that it is this big, large popcorn entertainment, is that it feels familiar to people now. Because we've been with these various characters for so long and in so many films, we are very much ingratiated with them, or at least the fandom is. They know who these characters are, they know their predilections, they know the kind of entertainment or the comedy they're going to get. Rock and Jason Statham are fantastic on screen together. Their antagonism is great entertainment. I hope they do a spin-off movie with The Rock's character because I find him to be the most entertaining at this point. The other characters are fine, they're right in line with what you've already seen. The film, while entertaining, did bother me in some respects, specifically the action sequences, the way they were made, the way they were edited, the way they were presented to us, I found them to be rather generic in form, rather regular kind of action sequences we see all the time. It was They were a little bit over-edited. F. Gary Gray is not really quite known for action films. Yes, he has done action films in the past, specifically with the remake of The Italian Job, and that has a lot of car action sequences in it, but never to this scale. This is kind of larger-than-life action, and I felt that he kind of utilized a lot of filming techniques over and over again as a crutch to kind of just put this film together and put these scenes together, and I found myself being quite bored with them sometime, and that's just me. It's not that they weren't entertaining, it's just the way they were made I found to be so generic that it kind of bored me from time to time. Also, Charlize Theron as the villain I would say is fine as the villain. I kind of got bored with her towards the end of the film because she just kept having these rather villainous monologues over and over again, and I didn't find her motivation to be that good at all. I thought she was kind of just doing things just because she felt that she could do it. And also, you kind of have to set certain things aside. Is the acting great? Is the writing great? Is some of the comedy forced? Yes, of course. These are all things inherent with the property at this point, and you kind of have to let those things go and just go with it. Another critique I have with the film, and I think it's really just based on my own personal observations, and that is that 
What has been at the center and at the core of these films thematically is the concept of family. And yes, that is very much incorporated within this film. It really wasn't as prevalent as it was in the previous films, and I think that has to do with the unforeseen loss of Paul Walker, who was very much a central character in this story, and very much a central character to the Dom character. He was very much the foundation of this sense of family, of this sense of brotherhood that this group is really focused on. And with that aspect fully missing in this film for the first time, you really feel that sense of loss. You feel that there is something missing. And that is something you really can't fault the film for having because you can't replace the Paul Walker character or that relationship. So with all that being said, I'm going to give The Fate of the Furious a 3.1 out of 5 stars. It's not a great film. It is rather entertaining. If anything, I consider it the weakest film, perhaps, in the newest crowd of films probably from five until now but i definitely recommend it for those who are fans of the franchise this has been my review of the fate and the furious if you like this video please check out the other videos on my channel